Hi everybody, welcome to Phoenix Central Park. If you've come this far in the video, I imagine you must love lunar orbit as much as I do. I thought I'd take this opportunity to dissect the piece a little bit, maybe a few tips and tricks on how I practice it and how I got it to the stage where it's ready for performance. There's a few aspects of technique that are involved in this piece that when you listen to it, you might think, oh, that's too hard for me. I don't know how to do that. But I love the idea of playing this piece. So if you follow me along this journey, there's a few things I'm hoping I can help you with. So let's look at the opening bars of the piece. Bars one to seven have this orbiting sound that's very invocative of the title of the piece, of course. We have to pretend we're kind of in space and we're floating around. As you would have heard in the recording I just made, uh, some of these string crossings and things can be more difficult to execute than we would like. But if I just give you a couple of ideas to how to proceed, it will make things a little bit easier at home. So instead of going all in and choosing the left hand fingers and getting the bows to work, I suggest you might just start with the open strings. We just take the rhythm and then we dissect the work a little bit and then put it back together. So if I take the left hand out, this is how it goes. Suddenly that becomes much more manageable. The best thing to do is to make sure that you really get your bow to go smoothly over the strings. You can practice this in another way by adding a rhythm to this to the string crossing to make it easier. It goes a little bit something like this. If we really make sure the bottom string sounds its best, and I cheat a little bit there and I pluck the C string as I play because it really sets off the vibrations of the cello. Have a listen closely. If I don't pluck the C string like that, sometimes it sounds by pluck, I get the best sound that my cello can make. So that's one example of how to start off this piece. And then of course we add the left hand slowly, but really carefully to make sure everything is really where we want it to be. Really gentle. And now the key to any piece in practicing is patience and go slow. This piece is very tempting to go super fast and then what happens, it becomes this really mess of sound, feels really great to play, but it doesn't feel as good to listen to. And it's really important to make sure that your audience enjoys your performance as much as you do. The second thing that I'd like to tackle in this little tutorial is these pizzicati. There's lots and lots of pizzicati in this piece. There's lots of double stops. There's lots of glissandi. One of the really important things to make sure is you want these pizzicati to sing as if they were singing with the bow. So we need to make sure our left hand is really pressing down on the string like a ballerina on the tiptoe. That gets a better sound. Have a listen, see if you can tell the difference. Maybe that might be hard to catch on the film. I'll give you a little example. We want these pizzicato to sing and ring out. Otherwise they sound a little bit it's not as nice, it's not as fun to play either. So keep an eye on that left hand shape and really make sure your fingers are pressing down. You could also try playing it with the bow first. It might be an easier way to tackle some of the double stops, especially in bar 12, if we have a listen. But I do the pizzicato. funky, groovy bass line to it. The next aspect of this piece that can often be quite challenging is artificial harmonics and glissandi, all at the same time. If we look at uh, a couple of examples, for example, around bar 21, we have... Now, out of context, that seems kind of easy, yeah? And this one... But how do I get those notes? So again, we dissect a little bit of what I'm actually doing, making it easier for you to play at home. The first thing that's really important with artificial harmonics is where your bow lives, on the contact point of our string, really close to the bridge, like uncomfortably close that you might not be used to practicing like. It might even sound like this to yourself. Not as beautiful and warm as you're used to, but if you put the artificial harmonic, we're there. Sounds beautiful. 
If I play too far away from the bridge, it doesn't have the most beautiful sound. So really work on that with the artificial harmonics. And now, let's find a way. How do we actually play them? How do I actually get those things right? For example, in bar 25, I'm here, and I have to do the next glyphs in artificial harmonics. I get the E flat note with my third finger. I'm actually hearing it. And then I know that I'm in the right spot. Have a look again. That guarantees that I don't make a mistake there, I think, because I've got something that I've planned that's easy to execute. As you go through the piece, you'll find lots of examples of these. The end of page one, for example. Pay attention to where my bow was in that example. It makes it much easier to play. The fourth thing I'd like to talk about is don't forget to have fun. It's all very well and good to have great technique, and be able to play artificial harmonic slides, be able to do great string crossings and cool pizzicati, but don't forget the piece is about you and how you can communicate with your audience. This piece has so many fun jazzy riffs to it. It has really funky bass lines. It's quite different from a lot of other music and even in our Australian repertoire, it's quite different. And that's why I love to play it so much and the audiences that I played it for have loved this piece. It's really important not to rush. Something about playing jazz music is quite different from classical music. And if you rush, the character of the music just doesn't come across to the audience the same way as you would like it to if you were listening to it. For example, if we go back to that pizzicato section, So funky, so groovy, and you'll find your audiences will groove along too. I hope you've found my tips and tricks really helpful. I certainly did when I learned this piece. And the main thing is stick with it and remember that slow practice. It will really pay off in the long run.